Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a pretty splendid box, I have to say. Nine discs featuring virtuoso cellist Truls Mork in all of his cello concerto recordings for the Warner Group. And there's nine discs worth of them. You know, it's a really fascinating concept, but you can basically fit the entire modern cello concerto repertoire, that is the great cello concertos, on... Oh, four or five discs, maybe? Or less? Three? Two? There just weren't many of them. There were lots of cello concertos, of course, but, but you know, the ones that actually penetrated and became concert hits is teensy, 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 tiny. So you get the whole, well, most of, well, not all of it, but most of the major cello concerto repertoires in here. The Saint-Saëns cello concertos are not here. Lalo is not here. Okay. But uh, most of the rest of it is, and then some, in splendid performances. And it's cheap. It's a cheap, I mean, it's, it's, it's really kind of amazing, this thing here. Um, and I, it's called, of course, Great Cello Concertos. Because not everything in here is a great cello concerto. Well, maybe they all are, but, you know, history has not decided. And we can decide. So let's see what's in here, shall we? Um, there's, like I said, it's nine discs. And we're just going to go through them. And it's surprisingly wonderful. I had most of these as single discs, and they were all really terrific. So this is wonderful to have. CPE Bach, three cello concertos. These are the great surprises of the early cello concerto repertoire, but people don't know them. There are three of them. They're also available as keyboard concertos because all of CPE Bach's concerti were keyboard concertos and others. There are some flute concertos and oboe concertos and whatnot. Anyway, these are wonderful works, especially the A minor, the last one, Votken 170, in case you're wondering which one it is. What is these fabulous works. And oh, these are wonderfully well played with Les Villons du Roi under Bernard Labadie. Yes, fantastic stuff. Really, really wonderful music. I can't say it enough times. You got to hear them. They're just hot, 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 hot. Then we get the Haydn Cello Concertos with the Norwegian Chamber Orchestra under Iona Brown, formerly of the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. Remember her, and she's a very good conductor as well, in this stuff anyway. So this is a lovely disc of the Haydn Cello Concertos, um, which are, you know, of course, classics. They are really the earliest classic cello concertos that we have. Um, you know, from that period, no one else, you know, because CPE box weren't known and the Boccherini cello concertos, which are marvelous, by the way, also weren't known. They should be. It's terrible. Okay, we've got the Schumann cello concerto, Kol Nidra by Brook. You have to have that. And Block Shlomo. Yeah. This is with the Orchestra Philharmonique de Radio France with Myung Hun Chung and Pavel Yervi. So this was like nice to have. I remember thinking when it first came out that the Shlomo could be a little bit sweatier. It needed to be a little bit more like passionate, but it's very beautiful. You know, Mork has a gorgeous tone. He really does. That's sort of his thing. I mean, he, he never makes an ugly sound or virtually never. And, and it, all of these things are just wonderfully spun out and beautifully sung. Um, he doesn't make all of those sort of awful cello mooing bovine expostulations that you tend to hear in so many cello concerto performances. Disc four, the Dvorak! Yay! Along with the Tchaikovsky Rococo variations, which you always get almost with the Dvorak or frequently. Um, this is the Oslo Philharmonic Maris Janssen's. Very, very well done. Nothing to complain about. I mean, is it one of the great Dvorak cello concerto performances? There are so many. It's just, it's really good. It's just, it's really good. Um, the Elgar Cello Concerto, which still I find to be a very um, unimpressive work. That's me. And the Britain Cello Symphony, which I really think is ugly. Oh, what a strange, ugly piece. I've never quite figured out the Cello Symphony. Uh, you know, Britain wrote it for Rostropovich, who played it wonderfully. There's that recording, which is, you know, the reference version. But it's such a gnarly and and sort of dark and and. I don't know. There's something about it that I find rather off-putting. But, you know, so this is not like my favorite disc here. It's with the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra under Simon Rattle. So, you know, okay. They do fine. I mean, as a accompanist, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the music is not 
where I want it to be. Okay. Uh, Shostakovich cello concertos with the London Philharmonic and Maris Janssen's excellent performances. Not as gritty as some um, in the first cello concerto especially, but, you know, like I said, Mark is, is one of the greats. I mean, it's like having Martha Argerich, except a cellist. You know what I mean? He's just really, really, really good. Everything he does is really good. So that's fine. Prokofiev, the symphony concerto with the alternative finale in the world premiere recording with the city of Birmingham Symphony and Pavo Yarvi. Now, the, the, the symphony concerto by Prokofiev is a problematic work. I happen to love it. I really do. I think it's a very, very nifty piece. Structurally, formally, it's a little bit difficult. It doesn't have Prokofiev's, what you might call, top drawer melodic material, I think. It's got some really good tunes, don't get me wrong, and it sounds totally like Prokofiev, but it can feel its length if the performance isn't really, really taut and put together. This is a very good performance. I don't see much point in having two versions of the finale. I'm not sure it helps, um, but it's interesting. And, you know, it's a big, long work. How long is it here? It's, it's, it's 38, 30, no, 40 minutes, really. And the, the other version of the finale is even longer. It's 1128 versus 1237. And you can make the comparisons yourself. Um, I, I just, I've heard them. I mean, I listened to it all, of course, but I, it didn't strike me as one of those things where you were being presented with um, a, a, an epic choice. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's not really critical that we know. Then we've got a lovely disc of three sort of contemporary, contemporary-ish cello concerti. Mayaskovsky, which is you know one of his better known pieces, actually. Um, it's 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 an attractive piece, but like all of Mayaskovsky, there's something a little bit faceless in so much of his music, and there's, it's not a function of the performance. It's really a function of the work. Um, you know, it all tends to just, it's kind of like Delius goes to Russia. You know, it just sort of flows, it flows, and it keeps flowing, and it flows, and it flows, and you sort of nod off. But but it's not a bad work, and this is a very good performance of it. So it's with Pavo Yarvi, who's known here as Pavo, Pavo Yar. Isn't that interesting? Maybe he's like Tar, you know, the conductor, Pavo Yar. And then we've got Arvo Pert, Par, his pro at Contra, Concerto for Cello and Orchestra, which is only, you know, it's only like nine minutes long, um, with the Estonian National Symphony under Pavo Yar, V. He's got his V for this one. And then, du tu tout le monde lointain, one of the great contemporary cello concerti. It's fabulous. With the Orchestra Philharmonique de Radio France, Radio France, pardon me, Byung Won Chung. Yes, and last but not least, um, Aaron J. Curtis, a whole disc, his Colored Field, which is a lovely cello concerto, which he dedicated to Trolls Mork, and it's long. Oh, it's a big sucker. It's, let's see, it's 22 plus 17, it's 40 minutes long. And then his Musica Celestis for cello and string orchestra, and his Air, and the version for cello, Air as an aria, version for cello and orchestra, which is, you know, 12 minute long, uh, you know, jeu d'esprit, as they call it in the biz. This is with the Minnesota Orchestra under A.G. Ui. And yes, there you go. Really a first-rate collection. Now, there are, as I said, other, you know, important cello concerti. There, this doesn't have all of them. There's no Lalo. There's no Sasson. There's no Ludoslavsky. And then there are, like, all the modern composers who wrote cello concertos. Lots and lots and lots of them. But still, um, it's a wonderful collection. It's, it's a real sort of linchpin collection to get your cello concerto world going because there are no bad performances. None whatsoever. It's all really first-rate stuff. And so at the price, it's a steal, and I would recommend it accordingly if you can still get your hands on it. I really would. It's first class. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.